Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your November 2020 mid-month general readings. This reading is for the fire sign of Aries. Welcome everyone. I hope you're all doing well as we continue to transition into the winter season and the holiday season. Uh, for those of you who are celebrating Thanksgiving, I hope you have a safe and wonderful holiday. And thanks for taking the time to tune in today along with your likes, uh, shares, subscribes, donations, support, feedback, comments, all of it. Very welcome and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So this reading is for the fire sign of Aries, our Rams, for the last two weeks of November. That's Aries sun, moon, rising. If your Venus is in Aries, if you're cross-watching for an Aries, it's all relevant. But of course, being a general reading resonates a little differently for everyone. So if you know all of your signs, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, watch them for additional insight, perspective, etc. If you find that any of the readings do resonate with you and you'd like to reach out and take a deeper look at something, uh, get a personal reading, you can click on the description link below for uh, more info or contact details. Uh, you'll see my email address there, Maggie, the number one McGuire at gmail.com. I'd be delighted to hear from you. I do offer a wide variety of readings in all the main areas of life. And as we're approaching uh, the holiday gift giving season, personal readings always uh, make great gifts for people. And uh, I also offer six and 12 month overviews, which take a look at what's coming in your life potentially over the next six or 12 months, which I also get a lot of requests for around this time of year. As we're transitioning out of an old year and into a new one, people want to take a look ahead. So something else to keep in mind. So email me if you're interested, and uh, I'd be happy to get back with you. I can usually respond the same day with more information. And because I do readings full-time, I'm pretty diligent about working with your schedule and my schedule to get those readings set up as quickly as possible. So email me if you are interested. Okay, Aries, let's see what the last two weeks of November have for you. I am using a new deck, the Tarot of Dreams. I've been very excited waiting for this deck. Beautiful artwork. Uh, even the backs of the cards are quite lovely. They're a little bit larger than the traditional average size deck, so getting used to shuffling. Okay, Aries. Our rambunctious Rams. Last two weeks of November. Okay, Aries, we begin with the Palace of Wands. So in this particular deck, Ciro Marchetti added a fifth card uh, to each of the elements, you know, fire, air, water, and earth. Uh, and the, the Palace of Wands is kind of like a fifth court card. It represents an actual physical environment or the energy of that suit and uh, the ability to manifest that, depending on what cards come out around it. So the Palace of Winds, so that's, you know, that's the potential of the, the energy of fire which governs the suit of wands. Uh, and the potential represents the absolute fullest potential that it can have. And it's built, this, the, the palace, the castle itself is built onto a mountain which uh, represents that it might be a long climb to manifest what your dreams, what your passion, what your wanting is. But the fact that it's there also represents that it's attainable, whether it's a physical environment or a different other kind of goal that you have. We have the lovers. Hmm. The Knight of Wands. The Wheel of Fortune, my goodness. The Ten of Coins. The Hanging Man, interesting, the Hanging Man is with the Knight of Wands. Hmm. From the bottom of the deck, the overall energy for the last two weeks of November is the Two of Swords, which typically represents Aries that you're at a crossroads, but there's something you may be reluctant or resistant to looking at. I feel like it's a decision that needs to be made. And it's a decision that's either about a primary relationship or a decision that may affect your primary relationship and residence as well. 
I mean, we do have the Palace of Wands, which can represent a physical environment. We do have the Ten of Coins, which can has a strong connection to home, family. And the Ten of Coins is directly under the lovers. And this combination of cards, Aries, can represent, I mean, the classic combination is moving in together. I mean, there's a strong kind of connection theme of relationship and home, and even like the physical environment at home, of home. It could be moving in together, it could be getting married, it could be coming back home. You know, if you've been a stranger, there's been some kind of geographical distance. But it feels like you're struggling with your own elemental energy, which is fire, which is aggressive and action-oriented and forward-moving. Here, the Knight of Wands is the fastest and most impulsive of all the knights, which represent offers opportunity for change, the speed at which a situation moves. However, the card that's with the Knight of Wands is the Hanging Man, who does not charge forward. The Hanging Man hangs upside down from basically what represents the Tree of Life or the Tree of Knowledge. It might be an awkward or uncomfortable position because you may want to charge in there and do something. But the Hanging Man knows that things aren't done yet. They're still playing out. So he's watching, he's gaining new information and knowledge, getting a different perspective, seeing things that he didn't see yesterday. And, you know, he'll make decisions based on that a little bit later. But for the time being, this is about watching and gaining information and trying to figure out what to do, even though there feels like there may be some impulse. Do I, don't I, do I, don't I? And the Two of Swords can represent, too, being at that crossroads and not knowing which decision to make, and maybe even really not wanting to make a decision just yet. Whether it's moving in with each other, getting married, because this feels very much like a relationship reading. I, I, again, it might be about the relationship itself, like do we move in together, do we get married, do I come back home if there's been some kind of you know separation, whether emotional or emotional, physical, just geographical for other reasons. Or it might be a decision in another area of your life, but it has a significant impact on your relationship and your home and family life as well. The Palace of Wands and the Wheel of Fortune are absolutely beautiful energies. But I feel Aries like so the palace card in each suit in this deck again it's like a fifth court card and it can represent either a physical environment in which desire and passion and action and you know is is physically manifested or it can represent the energy, the fire energy of the suit of wands in something that you want that is attainable, even though it might not be the easiest thing to manifest in your life. But with it is the wheel, the wheel of fortune, which is divine timing and orchestration. It's energies of God, spirit, your angels and guides, which of course we have no control over. And I think Aries that in spite of that beautiful explorer, take everything as it comes, whatever may come, kind of energy that a lot of Aries has. I think that you may have a vision of the kind of relationship, home, family life that you want. But I feel like some of the fear or trepidation or resistance to moving forward in something here might be due to the fact that the Wheel of Fortune, although in the upright position it does imply good luck, good fortune, but it represents energies beyond our control, things that we can't anticipate or plan for. And that might be what's holding you back or making you, you know, super cautious here, maybe not willing to make the decision just yet because, you know, what if this happens and what if that doesn't happen and, you know, it really looks like here that what you want in terms of relationship, home, and family life is quite possible and attainable. But it's the unknown, which we all kind of live with day to day, um, that has you, I feel, kind of holding back. It's It may be that you feel that you need more time, even if you've had a lot of time already, or you there may be something more that you want to see for a longer period of time, you know, to see if this is the right decision, if this is the right person, etc. So let's clarify. Let's clarify the Two of Swords. What is it that you're not wanting to make a 
decision about or see. Because the way the cards run chronologically, the aces represent the spark, the opportunity, the start of a new path. The two is the crossroads where you try and choose which path to take to begin to manifest. And, you know, so being stuck in the two energy is like being stuck at a crossroads, being stuck in indecision. Clarify the two of swords. Two of Wands. Sorry, the Three of Wands. No, nope, that's the Two of Wands. I don't have my glasses on. It looked like a three to me. So it's another two. <laughs> the Two of Swords and the Two of Wands. So you really are stuck at a crossroads energy of what to do. The Two of Swords is blindfolded, doesn't want to look at it, doesn't want to think about it right now. The Two of Wands is more action oriented, which which path do I take to, do I go through door A, door B, do I continue moving forward, what do I do? It's really being stuck at a crossroads, what's behind that? The five of wands, conflict, could be internal conflict, external conflict, again, the sense of real uncertainty. You know, and if this is a romantic relationship situation, Aries, everything here implies that that, that there is great love and even great passion between the two of you. There's just this fear of the unknown. What if we move in together and it's horrible? What if we come back together again and it doesn't work right? What if we get married and then five years later we'll get... I mean, you know, it's kind of that not knowing what if. Well, none of us really know, right? Okay, let's clarify some more. Let's clarify the Palace of Wands and the Wheel of Fortune. the universe handing you a gift Aries it's like <laughs> the six of coins gift giving and gift receiving well that just sent shivers up my neck um, yeah the the palace of wands and the wheel of fortune is in the upright is like universe handing you a gift in this relationship or the potential that this that this relationship or situation has in what it can be. It's like it's a gift. It might not be easy to attain and manifest this, but it is there and it is a gift they are giving you. And then to clarify it, we have the gift giving, gift receiving kind of card. Yeah. I mean, the advice for the majority of you is probably to move forward, make the decision and do the thing do the thing which brings you guys together. Clarify the lovers and the ten of coins. So yeah, the lovers and the ten of coins is like marriage, moving in together, cementing it for the long term kind of thing. Definitely a love reading or in the arena of love for most of you. A bit similar to Leo's too. Ace of Cups just popped out. <laughs> it's it's such a beautiful reading Aries um, so we're clarifying the, the lovers and the ten of coins which is like moving in together getting married cementing it for the future and the clarifying card is the ace of cups renewal it could be new love and romance for some of you but this feels like it has history behind it but again for some of you it might be somebody that you met recently and it has like all of the elements it's almost too good to be true so you're cautious I think for others of you this feels like it has history so there's emotional renewal there's a fresh new start there is you know the heart opening up again perhaps believing in something that you had ceased to believe in or maybe you held as a dream kind of in your heart, but you've been disappointed badly in the past and you were just afraid to let yourself believe that this, you know, that the picture you really kind of wanted way back whenever could really happen for you. And whatever your negative experiences of the past have been, that's kind of what's holding you back. That's what it feels like to me. So the Knight of Wands and the Hanging Man you know, this is opposing, this is, again, being an internal conflict, opposing forces. It's like, you know, just 
do I, don't I, do I, don't I? That's the, what I keep getting. And it feels as if the universe has kind of handed this to you and they're supporting you moving forward and making the decision to cement this, to do the next thing. Part of which is emotional energy and part of which is practical energy. You know. All right, let's pull some advice and guidance for Aries. Advice and guidance for Aries. <laughs> the King of Wands. You are the King of Wands. Leo, Aries, Sagittarius energy. Sun, Moon, or Rising. Be the King of Fire. Move forward. Decide what you want. Move forward. Act on it. The king has grown and matured a lot beyond the page energy, the night energy, the dreaming, spontaneous, impulsive energy. He knows how to take the inherent qualities he possesses, fire, passion, creativity, drive, aggression, assertion. Through his experiences, he's in trial and error. He's reached a point where he has balance over these emotions, balance over this element of fire, and he knows how to use it to create and manifest exactly what he wants in a very action-oriented, forward-moving energy. What's behind that? The Eight of Wands. Fast, powerful, definitive movement forward and communication, often sometimes travel. So if you're trying to make the decision to go, go. If you're trying to make the decision to enter into this thing, do it. I mean, free will, free agency, right, as I always say, but Spirit's Advice fire move forward do whatever it is this decision is to move forward and do it they're supporting it greatly they're handing it to you you know on a silver platter this is what you can have the thing that you thought that you couldn't have before that you believed in and maybe that was crushed before it is still possible this is not them this person is not that other person so so that's it, Aries. That is your reading for the last two weeks of November. It's an absolutely gorgeous reading. I hope it helped that you found it useful in some way. Again, if uh, you're interested in taking a deeper look at something or reaching out for a personal reading, uh, just click the description link below. Email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I would be delighted to hear from you. And don't forget gift readings as uh, a holiday season for friends, family, and loved ones as well. Okay, Aries, I will see you all in a couple of weeks for the December general readings. Until then, stay safe and well, and have a blessed Thanksgiving for those of you who celebrate it, and I hope to see you back here again soon. Bye-bye.